So this is your computer. It has a storage device called hard disk, which is where you store your files, applications, games and whatnot, even your operating system. We can refer to this hard disk as the secondary memory of your computer. Your computer also has another type of memory called the primary memory. Whenever you're running any application on your computer, the application is first moved to the primary memory where it is then processed by your processor. Any data that the application creates during its runtime is also saved in the primary memory and usually not the secondary memory unless the programmer wants to. All right, now usually your operating system handles all this process, but we are not going to talk about the OS because it's out of topic for this video. To make this process even more clear, let me take a simple example. Let me open the classic Windows calculator. The moment I click on it, a process of this calculator is loaded into the main memory, or in other words, the primary memory, by the operating system. Now, a process is nothing but an instance of this calculator. Suppose I want to add 2 plus 3. I click 2, I click plus, I click 3, and finally I click equals. And there I have the result. Now what do you think just happened? When I click the button 2, the value 2 is actually loaded into the main memory and it is stored there at some address. Let's say the address where the number 2 is stored is 101. Usually the addresses are represented in hexadecimal format, but to keep things simple, let's consider them in decimal format. Similarly, when you click the button 3, the value 3 is also stored in the main memory at some address. Let's say it is stored at the memory address 105, once again in decimal format. When you finally click the equals button, it is now that the computer needs to perform an arithmetic operation between the numbers 2 and 3. This is when the processor, or in other words the arithmetic logical unit, short for ALU, comes into the play. Since the addresses of both the numbers are known, the numbers are retrieved from their memory addresses and then an addition operation is performed by the ALU and the result is displayed. Also, the result is once again stored in the main memory at some address. Now, let us edit the values stored in the main memory. I'm going to use Cheat Engine which is a very famous memory editor for Windows. I'm going to first select the calculator process whose memory I want to edit. Now I can search for memory addresses, change the values in those memory addresses and even freeze those values to prevent them from changing again and again. In the calculator, let me click 2 and then click plus. So now 2 is saved in the memory. I will search for the value 2 in the cheat engine. And there are many results found. We need to filter out these results and get to know the exact memory address where the number 2 is saved by the calculator in the memory. For that we will do something. I'll add 2 with 3 and then the result 5 is displayed. Now once again I'll click on plus and you can see that 5 is now stored in the place where 2 is previously stored. So we will come back to the cheat engine and we will redo the search by now searching for the values which changed from 2 to 5. We still have a plenty of search results so we will just repeat this process one more time until we find the exact memory address. So there we go. These are the memory addresses where the first number of the addition is being saved in the memory. Apparently there seems to be two places where this number is being stored but I have no idea why. Anyways, let me change this number to 100 and let's freeze this value so that it will not get updated by the calculator process. Now you can see that the calculator is behaving in a weird way. 12 plus 2 is equal to 102. How is that possible? Well, that's because the first number for addition is always going to be 100 as edited by us. So no matter what the user input is, the value is just freezed as 100 by the cheat engine. So whatever the second number for the addition is, it's going to be added to the first number which is 100. So yeah, it's always a wrong result. Isn't it cool like we just made the calculator show wrong results? So you can make this work for any program, including games, both offline and online, even battle royale games like PUBG. That's why you see a lot of people who cheat in such online games. 
they're just using memory editing scripts to modify the values in their game's runtime memory. That's it, nothing more. For example, I'm playing Pune Adventure here, which is a game that is specially made to let the game developers know what may go wrong. In other words, the game is just made for game hackers to test their skills and learn new stuff. So I am allowed to change the values or to edit the runtime memory of this game. So let's do it. So we are now in the game and you can see in the bottom left corner it shows our health which is initially 100. So let's try to modify the game's runtime memory in such a way that our health will always be 100. In other words, let's make ourselves immortal in the game so that we never take any damage from anything in the game. So first thing, I will choose a Pune Adventure process in the cheat engine and I will search for the value 100 which is the initial health value. Oh, there are literally hundreds of thousands of results for this search. So obviously we need to filter out these results to find out the actual address or addresses where the health value is being stored. So for that to happen, let's take some damage so that our health value fluctuates. So there are some giant rats here which are really cute looking but they actually seem to be eating us. Oh yes, and we are taking damage. Perfect. Now that our health value has changed to 76, let's run a search to see all the memory addresses whose values changed from 100 to 76. Well, there are still 42 results, so let's actually repeat this process one more time. Alright, now the value is 88, so let's run the search again. And once again, there are the same 42 addresses. And you can notice that the health value is actually being stored in all of these addresses. Because as soon as the health value updates, the values in all these addresses are also being updated at the same time. So anyways, let's change the values in all these 42 addresses to 100. Let's also freeze the value so that the health never goes down. What? Sneaky little rats. Anyways, that's not the problem. We could simply just respawn. So I freeze the values of all these addresses and also made sure they all have the value 100. Right, now let's go ahead and face those giant rats. You could see even though I am taking damage from the rats, my health value is automatically reset to 100 because we freeze the value to 100. So that means no amount of these giant rats can kill me now. I am immortal. We are now in the next stage of the game. We are at the Pune Island. And look, there's a bear running towards us. Maybe it wants us to pet him. Oh, that doesn't look like a good bear. I think it is trying to attack us. Bad bear. Anyways, we are immortal so no amount of bears can actually hurt us in the game. Now we got a gun and we can shoot. As we shoot, the ammo obviously reduces. So let's go ahead and give ourselves unlimited ammo. So I have found the address which stores the available ammo number and I have freezed the value to 30. So no matter how many times I fire the gun, the ammo is always going to be 30. Unlimited ammo. And by the way, don't they look like teddy bears after they're dead right thanks for watching the video hope you learned something new comment down what you think about this video don't forget to leave a thumbs up below if you liked this video and also don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon i'll meet you in the next video until then cheers